Hey, I'm back doing videos. I took a little bit of a break during the summer. I'm still getting over the little bit of COVID. I've got a new puppy. Say hello to Pete. Hi, buddy. Oh, yes, thank you. It smells like pee. Oh, my God, that was awful. Either way, I'm back. Um, first things first, we got to chat with Russ Nishikov about how his summer's going, what he plans on doing in 22-23, like playing for the Islanders, that is. The Bridgeport ones, I believe, but we'll see. So here's a chat with me and Russell Ishkakov. What do you think, buddy? Russell, thank you for joining me. Hopefully you're having a good day so far. How's it going right now for you, bud? Everything's great. I'm doing good. So, yeah, happy to uh, be in your podcast. So. Yeah, not so good for me. My voice is, I was telling you before, like, we're still recovering from COVID somehow. It's just not, the voice is just taking a beating right now. So I sound very raspy, but I swear to God, I'm hydrating. It's all right. It's all good, man. All right, let's get this started. Uh, congrats on the new and NHL contract. That's got to feel pretty damn good. Um, it's a two-year NHL deal. Has to feel good, of course. How does it feel to get that deal inked finally? Because it's been a little while. I thought you'd be signed last year, but it is what it is. And um, with uh, and was this something that materialized pretty quickly after the season ended with Alder, or was this just kind of like you kind of knew this was going to happen, or, or or what was the story behind getting that contract finally done? Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I was so happy to um, sign with the Islanders, and it certainly feels uh, feels really good. But, you know, with a contract like this uh, comes a big responsibility. So, um, but now I'm just uh, uh, doing my summer, summer preparation and trying to be 100% ready for the camp. So that's, uh, that's the plan right now. Okay, so let's, let's jump to that. I'm going to jump ahead on the queue, I guess, of my questions. Because you, you mentioned the training and I had something about that. So you're in off-season mode now and training began a little while ago. You've been training for a little bit now. Uh, you, you look pretty swole. Which is awesome because I, I do not, man. Like, man, your shoulders compared to these noodles, ridiculous. The juxtaposition is insane here. Um, so how's that going for you? How's training going so far? Are you trying to focus on like a specific area when it comes to training, like conditioning, get, gaining that swollness, if you will? Is it explosiveness? And then on to that, I know you're training in Helsinki. Why did you choose to train there specifically? Is just because... You want it to be in Helsinki, or is it specifically that program that you chose? So I'm actually training in Tampere right now, um, and I I, I I I was here last last summer. I came here for one week, and I trained with the guys, uh, and I just I absolutely actually absolutely loved it, you know. And uh, I love the program because everything everything that they're doing is uh, specifically what's what you need to do in the summer, you know, to get better. And I um, mean, everything, you know, it's uh, we're doing some like power stuff in the gym. We're doing uh, speed drills in the morning and we're doing a lot of stuff to prevent to prevent the injuries because mm -hmm. last season I actually had a lot of small ones like with my shoulders or the big one with my um, ankle. So which is that's this is this. That's great. And, um, you know, we have a lot of players uh, who's going to North America next year from NHL, NHL. And, um, you know, like guys like Barkov or Lina, it's, uh, yeah, it always, it always, uh, always great to, um, you know, like to just, just to watch them and, um, take like the best, you know, from them. Cause, um, you know, guys like Sasha, you know, she, he speaks, uh, Russian pretty good. So mm -hmm. I always, um, you know, always trying to ask them certain questions, you know, to get better on and off the ice. So. Man, uh, that would be epic. I was going to pull out some of my very limited Russian. And I was like, I don't want to embarrass myself. So I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Uh, my Russian teacher would not be proud with how it's progressed since university because it is not going well. Um, so let's jump back then a little bit. I wanted to get forward to get your thoughts on, on the training thing specifically because you mentioned it. But uh, shortly after you joined Adler last season, I spoke to their GM, uh, Jan Axel Olivara. I think I pronounced that correctly. And when I spoke to him uh, about you, so after you were signed there, I spoke to him and I was like, so what is it like getting those, this Russian guy? And he's like, buddy, like we don't get players of this caliber too often. We're not able to bring in guys like that. But what we hope to do with the guy like Russell is improve him and, and build upon and, and grow him as a player. So what have they been able to do? What has their program been able to do that's going to help you going forward? What have you, what's the big thing takeaway you take from your time with Adler last year? 
So probably um, going through adversity of a long-term injury. Mm. I think that, yeah, I think that's, that would help me the most. And um, also, as I said, we had so many old guys and experienced guys in the team uh, who played at the high level. So um, I was always, uh, you know, asking them about certain situation, um, you know, because I needed to improve my game. So I think that was a huge benefit for me. But, yeah, I mean... That's all I want to say. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Yeah. So then my next one is I want to talk to you about you, the hockey player. So size shouldn't matter, at least in my opinion, size should not matter um, when it comes to hockey, right? Talent is what should drive or what should be what people talk about more frequently. But obviously like you're not the, the, the biggest player. Now I'm not very big myself either. So with that, there, there, there are some limit, not limitations, but um differences so someone of the same talent level who's like six feet tall is going to seem different than you who's maybe a little bit under six feet tall unfairly i would suggest yeah. um so when it comes to you do you find that size is still a big difference in professional hockey or is it a little bit less now like we still have guys like johnny gaudreau who are below six feet tearing it up martin saint louis made a whole career on doing that do you find it's getting better for guys under six feet to just kind of like look my talents are good enough watch me um, I don't think so. I don't think so anymore. And no, certainly man. not for me. And, you know, you see so many guys in the NHL below uh, six, uh, six feet who are doing really good, you know, and I don't think so. It's, uh, it's everything is about the size, you know, it's about like a competitive uh, competitiveness and what you can bring to the team uh, to get the win, you know, uh, maybe like I cannot live that much in the gym, like, you know, the big guys, but uh, certainly I'm better at the different things, you know. And, um, you know, everybody has their own strength. You know, the big guys, they have power maybe, and the small guys, they're just quicker and more shiftier. So when I was doing um, wrestling, I did Greco Roman wrestling, not very successfully, as you can tell by my noodles here. <laughs> but my coach was always saying, like, the bigger they are, the bigger they fall. Just because you're big doesn't mean you're always going to win. The smaller guys often did, and obviously, different sport, wrestling and hockey. But there's something to that. And a lot of people will say, like, well, the smaller guys aren't competitive down low. That's not true with you at all. Like, you no, speak no, to no, your, no. your NCAA coach, and that's the one thing. It's like, he is a physical player. And that doesn't mean he's going to destroy you on the blue line with the hip check. It means he's going to go and battle you in the corner, right? Like, that is something you pride yourself on in terms of your game, isn't it? Absolutely. It's what do you have inside, you know? It's um, how bad you want it. Amen. And as far as I know, you want it pretty bad. Um, oh, so. yeah, I do. Next year, you're back in North America. People forget that you, you've been here before, right? Like, yes, you spent two years in Europe, in Finland, and then in, in Germany, but you played two years at the NCAA level already. Um, so obviously, we all know you've played here. Uh, I'm, I'm reading over my kind of script here, so I might be redoubling the things that I'm saying. Um, so the transition will be easy for you. It should be anyways. But can you shed some light on how your game has to change when you're going from North America over to Europe? or Europe over to North America. So for example, when I speak to coaches and when I spoke to Auntie Pennon and the coach for Team Finland, he'd often say like starts and stops are the big difference between Europe and North America. Is that for you one of the bigger things that you're going to have to like make that mental note, like starts and stops, not just peeling around? Or is there another kind of change that you have to make in your game now that you're back in North America? Um, I don't think so. That's a that's a big much of a difference in um, North America and European hockey. In North America, you play in a smaller ice, so you got to be uh, aware of the situation all the time. You got to make the decision quicker. Uh, on the other hand, in Europe, you know you have a you have a bigger ice, so you're probably gonna have more time to think. But you also got to skate more, and they play different tactics. So you know you gotta just you know react quicker and um, yeah, but. Uh, uh, as you said, I played in uh, UConn for two years already. And, you know, I've been doing those uh, starts and stop uh, every game. So it's kind of it's kind of like an issue. It's kind of in me, you know. So I think I will adjust pretty quickly back to North American hockey. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it so much. I, I'm, I'm not too worried about the adjustment for you. And I know some people say, like, well, he's an offensive guy. He's, his defense is not maybe that great. And uh, when I spoke to Ryan Wilhelman in two years ago, he was like, yeah, at the beginning of the year, maybe his defense wasn't where we needed to be, but we sat him down and that changed lickety split. You became like a pretty damn good defensive center. So, and, and that's the thing he was saying, like, yes, we have more ice here 
in in Europe, but that doesn't mean we don't play defense. So like the defensive game is is still well ingrained in, in your style of play, is it not? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You know, even though as you said, the the ice is bigger, but the way they uh, do like changes in the, in the D zone, you know, you just gotta, you know, your head's gotta be turning 360. So uh, yeah, and you gotta know where to go and what positions to play, and yeah. Yeah, it might so. be great offensively to have all that ice, but it's not so great yeah, defensively. Yeah. You got that yeah, all that yeah. room to cover. <laughs> so jumping to the aisles real quick, I got two more for you here. What do you know about some of the guys you might be playing with this year with the Bridgeport Islanders? Guys like Otto Rato, who's playing or played with Ukulele last year, playing with Team Finland right now, or guys like William Zufol, who played for the QMJHL as uh, St. John Sea Dogs and just like destroyed the league in goals and points. Um uh, who are taking their they're just taking their first steps in North American pros at the same time as you. What do you kind of know about them going into this year? Or, or just in um, general, what about what do you know about the Bridgeport Islanders, if we will? I don't know those guys personally, but uh certainly I've seen I've seen some of the highlights and I play against Ratu in Liga, so he's a pretty skilled forward. And then um yeah, I seen uh, William scoring a lot of goals in Q last year. So he has a pretty good shot. So yeah, I'm just uh Looking forward to playing along uh, alongside those guys and the other guys from the team. So excellent! Yeah, the, the rolling the R right there, mm, music to my ears. On the Ratu, <laughs> epic. And I obviously yeah. Russians, so you roll the R's just like yeah, us yeah, French yeah. people. Love it. Um, okay, so last one, something maybe a little bit more fun. Um, although I, I've been having a good time with some of these questions. What is oh, the yeah. weirdest no, pregame ritual you have ever seen? So no need to name any names. I don't need to know who did what. Like we've seen goalies, they like juggle the balls in the hallway or they're sitting on the bench and doing those weird like eye movements. And mm. then we got guys like Noah Sherry who said that he eats four or five Oreos before a nap. Very specific <laughs> amount of Oreos. Is there, is there something healthy pregame, huh? Right? <laughs> Love Oreos, but I understand even as a guy who doesn't take the greatest you know, care in his physical health, that that's probably not something you should be doing. Have you seen anything else weird like that? <laughs> you got me with that question. Right. Um, let me think real quick. You don't need to name names. I don't, I don't need to know who did yeah, it. I don't, just... I don't. I don't think so. I've seen like really weird rituals, like a pregame rituals, but I do have one. Okay. Um. So those 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 two guys, they used to go uh the, the day before the game, they used to go to the movies, and right after that, they used to get a big pack of Krispy Kreme donuts. So that would be a total of ten donuts, I think. Oh my god! So yeah, that would that would um yeah, so they would eat those and they would play the next day. <laughs> so that would be probably yeah the unhealthiest game <laughs> that I've seen in my life. Do they not get cramps? Oh that my was god! Just, no, <laughs> I don't know. And the funniest thing that that they, they didn't really care like what like what movie was in uh, in the cinema. They would just go because that's one of their rituals, you know. Because they were so superstitious about it. I was going to say, like, do they always want to see the same one? I guess they just, like, they show yeah, up. Yeah, because, like, like some weeks we would play, like, three, three, three games in a week, you know? And, yeah. The guys really just loved their movies. My God. Yeah. Get, bring them to movie <laughs> trivia so. night, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that's epic. Well, wrestling, that, that's all I had for you. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time in this evening to get to get in touch with me and, and chat about this was I had a blast. Um, I know yeah, it wasn't super me. long, but um, what maybe on the last, last thing, and we'll say goodbye. What's maybe the, the biggest thing you're looking forward to next year? Just, uh, I don't know. It's kind of, you know, kind of dream come true. Yeah. So just perform at the highest level, be the best version of myself and just, you know, Show everybody what I got. Love so it. that's the plan. That's the plan. Epic. Thank you very much, Russell. We'll leave it at that. Take care, buddy. And uh, we'll, we'll chat soon. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye -bye. See you later.